For those of you who have followed my ranking list over the years, you probably would have noticed a rather peculiar survivor in the top ranks. This is an IEM that despite the numerous overhauls, the numerous demotions of a lot of S tier IEMs down into A, B, even C tier, seem to have anchored itself into the S ranks. This, my friends, is the Heidition Viento. And what you might not know is that this specific IEM is already nine years old. So let's talk about that. Before we begin, this video is sponsored by Linsol. Yes, this is an ad read. Navigating the online chai fi world can be a bit of a daunting process. After all, there are so many retailers, so many sellers, you're absolutely spoiled for choice and to a point where you just simply don't know who to trust. Here, allow me to introduce you to Lin Sol, one of the oldest players in the online chai fi retail space. With an extensive catalog of headphones, IEMs, DAGs, and amplifiers, you can be sure to get the absolute best bang for your buck out of their catalog. And even more than that, they ship virtually everywhere and for free. So what are you waiting for? Go to linsol.com, tell them I sent you, support the people who support me. There are many different IEMs that have graced the S ranks in my ranking list over the years. Some would remember that the VE8 used to be up there, the Jomo Flamenco, at some point even an Odyssey LCD i4 was up there. And more recently, or should I say more controversially, there was the 64 Audio U12T that was there for a very, very long time before in my most recent ranking list update, I had demoted it down into the absolutely plebeian tier of A. But as I've said over the years, there have always been one singular constant in the S ranks, and that is the Hydition Viento. And I know at this point, a lot of people will be asking, what exactly makes the Viento the, the best IEM in all of existence? Why is it that a nine year old IEM in this kind of industry still manages to have this level of staying power. So let me explain. I think what most people wouldn't know is that Hydition is actually one of the OGs in the IEM game. For example, Jerry Harvey Audio, the grandfather of custom IEMs, the company Jerry Harvey was only created in 2007. Of course, then I have to mention that Jerry Harvey's original venture, which was Ultimate Years, was created in 1995. But that doesn't take away from the fact that his own original company was thereafter created in 2007. I say this as context because High Edition was created in 2003. 20 years ago. This was seven years before the creation of 1964 years, which is now known as 64 Audio. When I say that Hydition is the OG, I really mean it. They are the OG of the OGs. If you, like me, back then, in like 2010s, heard of the brand Hydition, they were already old by then. At this point, they are absolutely, positively ancient. But not to stray away from the topic from too long. Hydition first got their big break from the NT6, which was one of the very first IEMs that was tuned relatively well to a neutral target and made waves all around the audiophile community back then, and I would say even till now. The NT6 was widely regarded as one of, if not the best custom IEM that you could get at any price point. Uh, that is to say, until like the 2015s when the absolute plague of reviewers started reviewing Snakeball, and I'm not gonna get into that right now. For a while, the NT6 was their flagship, followed by the NT6 Pro, which was a more V-shaped version of the NT6, and I personally didn't like it as much. Now, let's talk about the market environment around the time when the Viento was released, back in the ancient, ancient year of 2014. This was around the time when the driver wars were at its peak. Everyone's focusing on the fact that how many drivers they could shove into a shell, some were moving towards four, five, six, eight, 10, and that was ultimately the meta. The more drivers you could shove in, the more market share you could get because that was what the consumers wanted. They didn't care about things like tuning or detail, resolution, distortion, or whatever. All they cared about is number of drivers. More equals better. And that was the meta. So what did Hydition do? Did they come up with something that was more than the NT6? Like maybe eight drivers, 10 drivers, maybe we could go all the way to 12. Right? No, Hydition went the complete opposite direction. Yes, the Viento was at the time 
more expensive than the NT6. By all means, it was Hydition's new flagship IEM. But it only came with four drivers. Absolute madness. Back then, during the driver war meta, clearly everyone disregarded the Viento. How could a brand come up with a new model with less drivers than their previous flagship, charge more for it, and then expect people to then accept it? It was, well, back then it was slightly controversial, not very controversial, but still, people just didn't accept the fact that, oh no, the Viento is the new king. And people pretty much just continued to shill the NT6 because I would say uh, more drivers equals better. But all of that is essentially back in hindsight. The NT6 still is really good, but has been completely overshadowed at this point by the Viento. And I would say even the other flagships from Hydition now still don't hold a candle in terms of popularity to the Viento. For example, the Violet or the NT8, both of which still are fairly decent IEMs. But again, at least in my opinion, the Viento is king. I've rambled on long enough. I know a lot of people now are asking, but Corinne, why? What exactly makes the Viento good? Now, let's explain. Let me show. Let me tell you, extol to you all the virtues of the legendary Viento. Like I said, in terms of driver count, it's relatively simple. It has four drivers, but what most people would not know is that it's four drivers with four crossovers. It is a four-way crossover. Each driver plays its own frequency range. Now, the significance of this may not be immediately obvious to many of you. So again, let me explain. When it comes down to it, the driver wars were simply just shoving as many drivers as you can into a shell. Now, the easiest way you could do it is to simply have stacked drivers. And what that means is that you could have a three-way crossover, for example. One does bass, one does mids, and one does treble. So in its most basic configuration, a three-way crossover would have three drivers, one, one, one. But what you could do is to essentially stack on top of that. So what a lot of companies did was, let's say, instead of using one, 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 they did two, 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 three, 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 or four, two, four, you know, they just stacked on top of whatever that was in the crossover in the first place. So essentially, in terms of the mathematics of it all, you could have something that was 18 drivers, but then uh, crossover-wise, there was only three because you were stacking six of each or maybe a 10, four, four or something like that. Something that would maybe inflate the driver account while at the same time reducing distortion, but not really to the level that a lot of people could listen to. I guess. The Hydration Fianto is one of those examples where the less is more philosophy actually holds true. And the reason why I say that is because there have been other models that try to extol this virtue. For example, the hum, hum reference, hum reference something. I don't know, Let's put it up on screen. And of course, the Wobbler Prelude, which I have done an entire video on, and you can just watch that and see me absolutely break down the reason why it was considered not a scam, just absolutely overpriced. The Viento, on the other hand, is what I'll consider peak efficiency. When you have four drivers and thereafter four crossovers, it means that every single driver does what it should be. There is no stacking. There is no inefficiency when it comes to, oh, the same driver is doing the same frequency response. For example, the Viento was tuned deliberately such that there was one driver for the sub bass, one driver for the lower mids, one driver for the upper mids, and then one driver for the treble engineering marvel. And I need to remind people once again that Hydition did this all the way back in 20 motherfucking 14. 10 years ago. And it doesn't stop there. No. Here's the thing. The Viento is already an engineering marvel if you considered it as a single system. But Hydition decided it's not enough. Why don't we add switches to it? The Hydition Viento, or should I say the Hydition Viento reference, as one of the best switch systems I've ever seen in IEM. By virtue of its amazingly built crossover system, you have two switches. One that controls nothing but the sub bass, and one that controls nothing but the lower mids. Simple as that, but something that was so simple yet not achieved by any other company. In effect, you have the A configuration, which is simply pure neutral. You have the B configuration, which is a sub-bass boost. You have the C configuration, which was the lower mid boost. 
And then you have the D configuration, which is boosting both the lower mids as well as the sub bass. Such fine-tuned control. To be able to separate the difference between a boost in the bass versus the boost in the lower mids, I have not seen in many IEMs, even now in 2023. I myself am a big fan of the Viento in its B configuration, or as I have nicknamed it, the Viento. And of course, it being a custom IEM, I could customize it as much as I want. And I myself have paid tribute to one of the first multi-driver IEMs I've ever owned, the Ultimate Ears Triple Fi 10 in its uh, somewhat gunmetal blue, as well as the black faceplate. Here's another big tick for the Viento, and in some ways, another cross. The Viento is one of the very few IEMs out there that I would say actually does sound a lot better in custom form. But conversely also means that it doesn't sound as good as it could in Universal. If you have ever dropped by Zeppelin and Co, who are one of the very few people with a demo unit of the Viento, you probably realize that that demo unit sounds rather bright, rather shouty, because at the end of the day, a, a universal unit tends to fit a lot shallower inside your ears. And that kind of makes sense, because if it were tuned for a custom fit, it means that it's tuned for a deeper fit. Anything that's shallower than that would result in the sound signature tends to get a lot more bright, a lot more shouty, and a lot more sh essentially shifts the resonance peaks downwards. This is in stark contrast to something like the 64 Audio U12T, which I still maintain is a very, very good IEM. But in this example, I would not recommend anyone actually trying to get an A12T, which is the custom version of the U12T, because the U12T, the treble, is spot on, which presents a problem when you convert it into a custom, because then it becomes very dark and very just not sparkly at all, because at that point, you are just shoving it from a very, very shallow fit, like you would in a 64 Audio Universal, into a rather deep fit, which is in a 64 Audio Custom. Again, we have the opposite problem with the Viento, where the Custom sounds so much better than the Universal, which already sounds really, really good in the first place. So now in 2023, the Viento is one of only three S-minus ranked IEMs on my ranking list. And this is after quite a tumultuous history with the Viento, not, not in a negative way, let me explain. You see, when I first tried the Viento back in like 2015, I really liked it. I loved it. But uh, back then, I think the only universals that it provided were ones without tips. So I was essentially fitting a custom-like universal into my ears, and I didn't know if, if that was representative of the sound at all. I ranked it back then, but then I realized that probably it was not the most reliable, and I removed it from my ranking list back in like 2017, I believe. Then a while later, Zeppelin and Co received their first universal demo unit of the Viento, and I tried it again. And I fell in love again. And I decided, wow, okay, so my impressions back in 2015 were actually right. And I put it all the way back up in S tier again. And that's where it kind of seesawed back and forth. It was S, and then after that, it was back down to S minus. And there was a very short stint where it was an A plus, but we went back up in S minus again. And now, in my biggest ranking overhaul again, I tried it out. I bought one, and I decided, yeah, this doesn't deserve anything less than one of the best IEMs that I've ever heard even in 2023. The tuning, even back in 2014, was very, very close to my own IEF neutral target. It was not quite to the level of diffuse field, but that's that's something I didn't want in the first place. This kind of sub bass boost, I did not hear for a very, very long time. Now the market is full of sub bass boosts, and this one kind of feels outdated in comparison. But make no mistake, this one was one of the first, and still, one of the better done ones. And if you don't like that subby wobby and you want something that a little bit more warmth, then well, you could always go for the C or D configurations that really do give a lot more richness and a bit of smoothness over the notes. Something that I don't really like personally, but if you're someone who likes that, you know, there is the Viento reference with the switches for you, or you can simply just buy it in your C or D configurations. The Viento is great in all its configurations. I personally love it in B, but I can appreciate it in A, as well as C and D. And I think a lot of people could, and it's so versatile. It's so versatile. It's, it's so ahead of its time. The Viento is something where I feel like it is lightning in a bottle. 
and no one really manages to recapture it. It is efficiency porn from an engineering perspective. It is versatile that it can cater to almost every taste out there. It is cheap in the relative sense of this market today. It is a thousand US dollars if you buy it from Zeppelin & Co. And more importantly, it is one of the only custom IEMs that will even consider to buy today because not a lot of things out there actually sound good in custom form. As much as the custom IEM brands would like to advertise you otherwise. So as of right now, the Viento is the only custom IEM in my daily rotation at this point. I do have other custom IEMs out there, which I can't really name off the top of my head, but the Viento, I use it. I actually use it. I use it daily. I use it on it, whenever I can commute, I would try to use it. On the plane, I would use it as long as it doesn't destroy my eardrums. It is at this point, you know, fully critical endorsed. I love it. That is not to say that this thing will remain in S tier forever. I am only human. Maybe at some point I would might demote it if the market actually manages to catch up that far. But at this point, one of the only three, top 0.28%. Good job, Hydration. And now let me just shout out my big money boys. Here are all of your names. You have subscribed to the $20 tier on my Patreon. And for those of you who have subscribed to the $30 tier, allow me to speak out your beautiful names. Dennis McMathies, Krina Gill, Alicia Burrito, Andrew Fritt, Tit Van Der Witt, Posse Chronic, Like Pizza, Drazar, 404 User Not Found, Seraphim, Miam, and Lunar Mint. I... A thank you all. Now, unfortunately, these are custom IEMs, so they will not be available for demo at the Hangout, just this place. But if you want to, just drop by. Anyways, have a coffee, demo anything that is in my collection, and just hang out. And with that, I shall see you next week, and don't die. Fuck off.